In today's video, I'm going to go ahead and show you all the must-known settings that there is to adjust for your brand new iPhone 12 or 12 Pro. This is perfect because with the introduction of iOS 14, there's a lot of new additional settings that everybody at least needs to know. So this is going to be a complete guide video for anybody who upgraded between these two iPhones. Either you're switching from an older home button iPhone or an Android device. I'm going to go ahead and show you basically everything there is to know. Let's begin. Starting off with the gestures. So gesture controls is really straightforward. A simple swipe from the bottom part of the screen and up will easily exit you off any application. And then a simple swipe from the bottom like so will allow you to switch between the previously open apps on the fly. A simple swipe from the right top corner will bring down the control center just like so. And then a swipe from the center to the bottom, this is where you can find your notifications. And then since 3D press was removed on some of these newer iPhones, you now have to long press but it still gives you a haptic feedback tap. So by doing this you notice that some of these icons actually give you additional options. So if you like to adjust this to a different rate, you could easily do so by hopping into the settings, go into accessibilities, go into touch, and right here there's haptics. Tap on here and you can select the speed that you like. And there's also an image down here that allows you to test it out right then and there. Back in the setting menu, if you go down to display and brightness, here is where you get the option to switch between light mode and dark mode. And in addition to that, you can also allow this to be automatic if you go down here and enable automatic right here. This will automatically change by sunrise to sunset, but if you go in here, you can manually adjust it by simply tapping on these icons. And a cool little hack, if you notice, you can just scroll with your finger without having to tap on the keyboard. So this is just a little uh, nifty hack, I guess you could say. If you want to adjust it this way, you can. But besides that, if we go back, down below here, you have to also have the true tone. What this basically does, with the sensors found on the phone, it will adjust based on the environment you're in, giving your screen an orange tint that's easier for your eyes. But if you go into night shift, you could have it so that the phone automatically goes into the darker tint. So it eliminates blue, so you can easily get a good night's sleep a lot quicker. And below that is where you could adjust the level if you want it extremely orange. Still here, in additional settings, if we could adjust, if we go back one, is the auto lock feature. Now by default, it's set to 30 seconds. I recommend adjusting this to at least a minute or two. Sometimes when you're reading an article, it's really annoying when the screen just turns off really quickly. You can also leave it a never, which means you have to manually lock the device each and every time you're not in, it's not in use. So it could preserve as much battery, but in my opinion, two minutes or so is like the sweet spot. So really it's all just a personal preference. So experiment with the auto lock. In addition to that, another feature that's worth talking about is the raise to wake. Now by default this is enabled and what basically this does, let me show you an example. As soon as you raise the display, it will automatically turn on. And then if you go ahead and turn this off, now when you do this, it remains off until you tap the display. That's basically what it does. I like to leave it on. I really don't have any issues. Again, personal preference, but it's good to know that you have this ability. Now in addition to that, if we go back one, there's now is a battery tab and this is important especially if you're buying a used device because you always want to make sure that the battery life health is doing good because it's really expensive to replace the battery on these newer iPhones. So here is not only where you can enable power low mode, low power mode I mean, but you can also set it in the control center which I'll show you in a bit. But here's where you can actually see the battery overall health capacity. So it's at 100 because this is a new device and make sure that it says optimized charging is enabled this way your phone can always charge efficiently without destroying or harming the battery and then down here you can also check which application is using the most power so if you notice that you're losing battery a lot quicker than normally you can always check down here so the cool thing about having these face id iphones it's not just strictly locked to one person you could have your spouse or somebody else that you trust to have access to your device so just by simply entering your passcode by going into face id and passcode right here Below here, there's setup alternative appearance. So, so this can be set to another person, or if you notice there's a headwear or headpiece that you notice that Face ID is having a hard time detecting, this way, your phone can always detect you even while you're wearing that different apparel. In addition to that, down here where it says require attention for Face ID, make sure this is enabled because if it's turned off, anybody who picks up your phone can unlock your device. 
Th but with this enabled, this means you have to physically make eye contact to the phone in order for the phone to register and unlock and give you access. Now if you're wondering how you get the I and O icons on these switches, it's really easy. Just go into accessibility, scroll down to display and text size, and right here is where you can enable the on and off labels. I just like to put these on just to make my device look different from everybody else's, so it's just a personal preference, but that's how you can enable that if you're also looking for this similar look. Now if you're not subscribed to Apple Music, if you launch the app, you may have noticed that you have Apple Music ads like this. Uh, it's really annoying to like see these ads pop up, like constantly reminding you to get Apple Music. Well, if you're tired of this, you could remove this. So by simply going into your settings and just scroll all the way down to the music tab right here. On the very top, just turn off show Apple Music. And now when you relaunch the app, it's simple, it's minimum, it's clean. It's not bombarding you to remind you constantly to subscribe to Apple Music even though you don't want to because the majority of us are subscribed to a different streaming platform. Now for this next bit, I'm going to have to switch to my older device because uh, my social media apps aren't installed just yet. But new for iOS 14 is now we have the ability to change the position location to prevent applications from tracking your exact pin location. So by selecting like a social media app like Messenger on Facebook as an example, on the location right now I have it on always, if you click on this right here is where you could disable this. So now that application will no longer be able to actually track you exactly. The circle ratio will be much larger. This next bit is just getting familiar with your camera layout. Now it doesn't matter if you have the iPhone Pro or the standard iPhone 12 with the dual camera setup. These two applications are very similar, but there's some nifty tricks that you could do. So when you launch the photo app, by simply tapping on the little circle button right here will allow you to switch between those two different lens. In addition to that, if you tap and hold, you could actually zoom in or zoom out to that exact sweet spot you're trying to get. And then by simply Switching to the video tab, right above here is where you can actually quickly change the resolution of the display by simply just tapping on this part of the screen. You can literally transition from 1080p to 4K as well as adjust the frame rate. And then the arrow icon right above, you can actually get access to additional tools because right here there actually is a timer. You could adjust this resolution, the square if you wanted to be a square display or not. Another nifty camera feature is if you press and hold the shutter button on the photo and you slide like so, it will immediately begin recording and you could tap the little shutter button to take additional photos and end it like so. And back in the setting, you may find it extremely helpful if you go ahead and enabled Apple Pay. If you haven't set up Apple Pay, just go into the wallet and app section right here. It will literally walk you through everything. And once you have it all set up, just simply tap the power button twice and you can select your credit card or other pain messives you have right here. Now in wiggle mode, there's a couple of nifty tricks and settings there is to know about. So to enter wiggle mode, you just press down on the display until it begins jiggling like this. If you want to move multiple apps at once, just tap and hold one and simply tap as many as you like and just switch to the next page and release and that's how you easily stack them. And by simply tapping on the dot icon down here, you could deselect some of these apps you want to hide. So some of these layouts, as you just saw, we just removed it and now we just have access to the app library. In here, you could pretty much search all the applications that your phone has installed, including those hidden ones we just did. And to unhide that hidden page, just undo the process. And that's it. And then if you go into your settings, you could actually have it so that whenever you install a new application, it will automatically be sent to the app library instead. So you can select that setting right here in the home screen setting that you just saw. Now entering wiggle mode, if you tap the little plus icon, this is how you can add widgets. Now there's three common styles to choose from most of the time. So for instance, this battery one, for example, you have these styles to choose from and you can simply just add just like so. I got more into detail of some awesome third party ones. So you could go ahead and watch that video over there if you want to know some really good widgets to install on your iPhone for some from some third parties. Now before there was really no way to really hide private photos besides having a hidden album right here underneath all the way at the very bottom. So there's actually now is a way, a setting you could disable that. So you can still put photos in the hidden folder, but the hidden folder itself will be hidden. So if go into your settings, scroll all the way down to photo, and down here, just 
turn off hidden album and now whatever photo you have in the hidden album is no longer easily able to be accessed from the album section on your photo app. Now control center, there's a couple of nifty settings you could adjust to better personalize it. So if we bring down control center just like so by going from the top to the bottom, here you notice that you have the smart home section and you might not have Apple smart home compatible to stuff like I do. If you want to go ahead and disable this to give your control center a more minimum look, just go into your settings and scroll all the way up to control center. Right here, click on this, you could go ahead and disable the show home controls and now you have a cleaner layout. In addition to that, right here is where you can actually add more toggles in your control center so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove some of these and the ones that I recommend that I find the most useful is the dark mode the screen record and the low power mode and if you have a preference which one to be on top you can always move it like so so now if you bring down the control center you could toggle these toggles just like so this one's dark mode if you long press on the brightness you could also adjust some of these settings as well like the true tone the night shift as well as dark mode as well you could do that here same goes for music if you have airpods you have additional settings options right there you could long press on the wi-fi or bluetooth so select between different bluetooth or wi-fi different wi-fi connections without having to go into the settings and there's additional stuff here as well and then on the screen record, if you long press, you could also see that you could include your microphone if you want to commentate over the screen record. And then one of the most important settings there is to know that you cannot forget is if you go back in your settings, if you scroll all the way down to Mercy SOS, right here, make sure you have this enabled. This way, whenever you're in a situation where you need to get a hold of Mercy Dispatchers, quickly you can just simply hold down the power and the volume rocker, the volume up rocker, and your phone will immediately begin to get a hold of a Mercy Dispatcher. And then down below, you can also edit your Mercy contacts. This way, in case an emergency, they also get notified with an exact location. And lastly, if you'd like to see the warranty stats of your phone, you can always just go into general, go on about. And right here you'll see it says limited warranty and it will give you the expiration date. You can also add Apple Care right here as I will show you if you're still in the 60 day time frame. But besides that, that is the first thing you must do on your new iPhone and some settings to adjust. Make sure to stay tuned because I'm going to go ahead and cover unique usage that you could get from that LiDAR sensor found on the iPhone 12. But besides that, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one.